So we are now ready to start looking at uh, the solution of uh, assignment number three. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, uh, earlier, that uh, next week, uh, next Wednesday, will be the last lecture in the course. I will uh, go through the solution for uh, last year's exam. Uh, and also, if you have any special request of things to be repeated, I can also try to find uh, time for, for that. Uh, I have not, well, I have uploaded solutions for two earlier exams in, in front here, but I will not upload the uh, last year's exam until we have uh, uh, finalized it on the, uh, on, on the lecture. So I, I will, uh, well, hope you can have a look at it uh, in advance, then you are much more prepared, and if you try to solve it without looking at a, a solution in parallel, uh, it will, of course, be much better preparation for, for the exam. Uh, so, let's now look at uh, this assignment, and first question is about inventory control subject to known demand. You're given a lot of information shown here in the first uh, section, and then you're asked about the optimal order size of the sausages, and ho how often they should be ordered. Then find the different cost elements, the number of sausages which should be on stock when you place a new order, given that the lead time is three weeks. Uh, and here the market price is estimated to 30 kroner, so you should find the annual profit on this product. And at last you realize that the sausages will have a shelf life of six weeks, so there's no need to, uh, well you shouldn't order uh, more than getting a cycle time of six weeks, because then they will be out of date. So then you should first answer how will this affect the ordering strategy, find the adjusted value of Q, the order size, and also find the holding cost, the ordering cost, and the profit with the new assumption, that you cannot have a cycle time more than six weeks. Uh, well, I have this solution here. so. Uh, here we are summarizing the different uh, variables from the, uh, from the text here. Very important when you get such uh, problems, try to read thoroughly through here. Get the values of the different parameters. Here the value is 1850, the cost of the sausages. The demand is 2100 per year, as given here. The K value, the ordering cost, is 2000. The interest rate in this case will be the sum of the different parts here. They have 22% of the cost of capital. But in addition, you need to uh, include the storage cost of 3% and the cost of 2% for taxes and insurance. So the final value for the internal interest rate, the I variable, will be the sum of these three elements. A total of 27% per year. And finding the optimal order size, use the EOQ formula with the parameter values shown here, and you will get a total of 1,297. This means use an order size, at this point at least, of 1,297. Uh, sausages, and then you will have a cycle time of dividing the order size to the annual demand, which is 0 0.6175 over a year, approximately 7.4 months. And in this strategy, ordering and holding cost can be shown here. Ordering cost is, of course, demand divided by Q to find the number of orders per year, and multiplied by the K parameter, the cost of placing one order. The holding cost is the average size of the stock, which when you have a deterministic or fixed demand, it is the half of the order size multiplied by the holding cost. And we can see that here we have approximately the same value of the ordering cost and the holding cost, which uh, proves the, the theory we, we have seen earlier, that uh, the optimal uh, order size is when the two cost elements will be at the same level when you have this uh, very simple uh, model. Uh, answer question C, how many sausages should be on stock when a new order is placed if the lead time is three weeks? Well, then you need to find 
uh, lead time of three weeks, the demand for three weeks. Here we have a fixed demand situation looking like this. So you need to find, to get an order at this particular point, you need to find three weeks and the demand of three weeks, which is the lead time. So when the stock level reaches 352, three weeks out of 52, of the annual demand, which is 121, place a new order and get the order delivered at this point, when the stock level reaches zero. Uh, so we are asked about the profit. And we are given that the market pr price is uh, estimated to 30 kroner, which means that the profit will be the, uh, well, the annual profit uh, will be the profit per unit, which is the market price of 30 minus the cost of 1850, multiplied by the annual demand. But then you also have to subtract the two cost elements, the, uh, the ordering cost and the holding cost. So this will give us a total profit of 17,673. But then we find this last sub-question about the shelf life of six weeks. And we are asked how will this affect the ordering strategy? And of course, well, using this order size of 1,297, was it? Then you will have a cycle time of seven more than seven months and of course when they have a shelf life of six weeks then most of the sausages will be out of date uh, when you try to sell them. So here we need to reduce the order size to meet the cycle time of six weeks. We according to the optimal policy we have found so far we have well the demand rate the demand rate is this still the same this is a speed how fast we can sell the uh, the products it is still 2100 per year and you can divide by 52 to get the uh, demand per week for example so you can now see that now when you have a demand uh, well, you have a cycle time. You should have a cycle time of six weeks. Means that the order size should be six out of fifty-two, multiplied by the annual demand, which means that you will have to displace this line to approximately this level. And here, the cycle time will be six week. And then, of course you will have to order much more frequently than you would if you were able to use the optimal policy. So now you will have ordering costs, which is much higher than the holding cost. And finding uh, the cycle time of six weeks meet, means an uh, order size of 242. And we can see that this is twice as much as the reorder point uh, because six is double three. So, uh, uh, so here this is actually the same logic. You have to find uh, a rate for the time period which is asked for in this case six weeks. Now we will have an ordering cost of the total demand 2100 divided by the order size multiplied by 2000 which in this case 17,355, much higher value than we saw earlier, which was only 3,238. The holding cost in the optimal policy was 3,229. Now you have only holding cost of 604 because the average size of the stock is much smaller here than it was in the optimal policy. But in total, of course, the ordering cost and the holding cost are much more than when the, uh, the optimal, uh, um, optimal policy, and the profit will then be much smaller here, 6,191. The formula is the same, but now you have much higher values on, uh, on the, the ordering cost because you have to order much more um, frequently. 
So that's the first question. We can continue to question number two, inventory control subject to known demand. Still, this is the second question on this topic. Now we have another situation because we have a company which is producing different components for car. Now we don't have this situation when you are ordering, you don't get the exact number of an order at one time, but you need to consider the production time. So instead of this situation here, you have a production situation where you are producing and you reach the top level and then you stop producing and you will have a demand looking like this, reach zero, you start producing again and you will have the full cycle time here but we are also talking about the T1 which is the uptime, the uh, time you are using for production and we are also talking about T2 as the down time which is the time where you are not producing yourself. Uh, you are only having a demand and waiting for a new production batch. So again try to read through this uh, uh, section and get as much information as possible. Uh, here you are given the rate for uh, demand, the rate for production, this is the speed, how fast you can produce and this means that the company produces the filters at a rate of 6,000 per month. This is the how much it is possible to produce if you are produ producing for, for full time for one month. Uh, so you are asked first how many filters should the company produce in each production run to minimize the annual holding and setup cost. And you are asked about the maximum inventory on stock, which in this case not will be the same as the order size because you will have a demand, you will use the product even in the uptime period, so you will never reach the level which is the same as the, the Q value, the order <coughs> size or the production <coughs> batch size. Uh, and then the setup cost and the holding cost with this strategy. What are the cycle time and what proportion of each cycle is used for production? Uh, and then you are asked another question because another producer has specialized on producing these air filters and offer to buy at the same price, uh, uh, buy the, the filters at a price of 30. Uh, so you should have to compare this production situation with a similar ordering situation. The same product but you have to compare what will happen when you are producing yourself and what will happen if you are buying from the other producer. So and here this is the text which explains the two last sub questions here. Uh, then you have to check what if the other producer give you discounts. First a discount on the all unit discount uh, uh, type which is discounted every unit in the order and then also in the incremental quantity discount the other type of, uh, of discount we have seen in, in this course. Okay let's now try to look at the solution here. We again try to summarize all information from the, uh, from the explanation text and see that we have a demand of 200 per month. This means it corresponds to 2400 per year. The P variable, the production rate, corresponds to well, 6000 per month will correspond to 7, uh, 72000 per year. So this is how much you can produce in a full year if you were able to, um, to, pro to utilize the, the production capacity in total. But of course this is not necessary because you have only a demand of 2400. And then the K parameter, the K means that uh, now the setup cost 
which in the form loss corresponds to the ordering cost. Now we are talking about setup of a machine, the cost of changing the setup of a machine. And we can look here that uh, the setup is uh, setup time for changing settings is one and a half hour. And the company estimates a cost of 1550 per hour. That means to change the setup of a machine to start a new production batch, you need to multiply the pri uh, price per hour to one and a half hour and get a total of uh, 23.25. Uh, and we are given the S value of 55 sales uh, price and uh, the cost of 25. Here we have only established a 22% in annual interest rate, which uh, is not uh, given in detail. So this is now the, the full interest rate, including the capital cost, the insurance, and so on. And we will find the holding cost per item as the interest rate multiplied by the cost, a total of 5.5. But we remember, for uh, finding the H mark or the adjusted holding cost in this case, we need to, uh, to adjust by the factor, which is the rate of demand divided by the production rate. Since we will not have to account for that, uh, like we have in this situation, uh, we, uh, we calculate the holding cost as the average size of the stock as one half of the order size Q. In this case, the order size Q will be approximately up here. We will never reach that level because we will use inventory in the uptime period. So we need to adjust by this factor, find the H value and multiply by one minus the demand rate divided by the production rate. Uh, and here the production rate is, uh, as you can see, much higher than the demand rate. So the holding cost per item or the, the cost which we should uh, calculate with is now 5.3, which is not very far away from 5.5. But, but if the demand rate is closer to the production rate, of course, this number will be smaller because the maximum size of the stock will be smaller if you are having a smaller uh, increase of, of the uh, rate when, when you are uh, producing. So with these numbers, it is easy to calculate the optimal Q. Use the EOQ formula for production, also called the EPQ, economic production quantity. It is quite similar to the EOQ formula, but now you should divide by the H mark, which is adjusted by the rate of demand divided by the rate of production. And you find a total number of 1,449 units to produce in each batch. Uh, so we are asked again about the maximum, well, now maximum level of inventory on stock. What are the setup cost and the holding cost? We can find the H value, the maximum inventory level here as the order size adjusted by the same factor as we used to find the, uh, the H mark, the small H mark. So we know in this case, the maximum level of the stock will be 1,401. And we are producing a total of 1,449 in each production batch in this uptime period. Ordering cost shown here. Still the same formula, number of, well, number of orders in one full year is the demand divided by the order size Q, multiplied by K, the setup cost value, and a total of 3,851. And the holding cost will be approximately the same value, but we need to multiply by H mark to adjust for the production and in the, uh, the demand in the production time, the uptime period. <coughs> and then we are asked about the cycle time and what proportion of each cycle is used for production. Well, the cycle time is quite easy to find. You divide the production batch size of 1449 to the total demand. 
gives us 0 0.6038, which is approximately 7.2 months. The uptime period will be, uh, well, in the same way, dividing the number of units in one production batch to the production rate, how fast we can produce. And we can see here that the uptime period is 0 0.0201. And this is also per year as a fraction of a year, since this is the production per year. Um, and we can find the proportion of the cycle as the uptime divided by the cycle time, which means that you will use one third of the cycle. The T1 will be one third of the full cycle time T, and T2 will then, of course, be two thirds. It's a difference between the cycle time and the uptime. So, then another producer has specialized on producing uh, air filters and uh, offers the first company to buy the same type of filters at a price of 30 each. And then the cost will be 1500 for each order if the company accepts this offer. Will you recommend the company to continue producing the filters or buy from another producer? Well, then we are back to this situation here. And we need to use the information shown here well, the price is 30. The cost is now 1500 per order. So now we have to go back to the K value when you are buying from an external vendor, not producing yourself. And you don't have to adjust the holding cost by the rate because you will get the full order at the same time. So here are the new values here, the C value. 20, well, should be 30. Um, the K value, 1500, and the holding cost, I multiplied by C, which should be 0 0.22, multiplied by 30, which is 6.6. .6. The cost of storing one unit of inventory in one full year, since this is the annual interest rate. And we will get the optimal Q as 1044. You will get the ordering cost and the holding cost which is also here, approximately the same. There are some fractional roundings, so then it's not exactly the same. If you are using fraction, you will get exactly the same level at the ordering and the holding cost. And now you should compare the profit of purchasing. Profit is the sales uh, price minus the costs for each item. Sales price is still 55. When buying, it will cost you 30 kroner. The ordering cost, and the holding costs are shown as here. The annual demand, 2,400. So when purchasing, you will get a profit of 53,000. When you are producing yourself, you have the profit per item, which is higher. 55 is still the sales price, but now it will cost you only 25. And the demand is, of course, the same. And the ordering cost and the holding cost are slightly higher than in the purchase situation, but still you will have a much higher profit here, 64,000 compared to 63,000. So with this information, you should continue, purchase, uh, continue producing yourself instead of, of purchasing because you will earn more than 10,000 kroner per, per year with such a, a strategy. But then you should now try to look at discounts because this other producer will give you a discount. First, look at the all unit discount. And we remember, then you have, when looking at the costs and the order size, you had a break point where, in this case, the break point, first break point is 1500. So if you are ordering less than 1500, the cost of one order will go like this. And when you reach 1500, you will actually have a smaller cost because you will get a discount for all the items in the order. And then between 1500 and 2000, when you reach 2000, you will have the same, uh, the same situation because 
the total cost will be smaller when you have um, um, when when <coughs> if you add some more items to your order to get and reach the breakpoint breakpoint and get the new price. So this is now the cost function. You have three different options. Either you pay thirty for an order less than fifteen hundred. You can pay twenty twenty nine for an order. Uh, between 1500 and 2000 and if you're ordering more than 2000 you will have to pay only 28 per item find the Q values which corresponds to each of the price here this is the same as we already have found the price of 30 1044 if you are using a pr price of 29, the optimal order is 1062, but we remember the break point, the minimum number to order to get this particular price is 1500. So here to get this price, we need to increase this number to 1500, but then we will get the price of, 2000, uh, of, of 29. And again, uh, the optimal order with a pr price of 28 is 1081, which is smaller than the breakpoint of 2000. And this means that we have now three possible options of the optimal order size. One is the EOQ value with the ordinary price. Another one is the lowest possible option to get the new price, which is the breakpoint of 1500. And the third one is the lowest possible option to get the price of 28, which is 2000 the breakpoints to get the new price so we have to find use the cost function as shown here uh, with the three different options and then compare the total costs uh, and the cost function is including the ordering cost the holding cost and since we know have a cost function which is dependent on the order size, we also need to include the purchase cost. So the ordering cost will be uh, the same, just divide by the Q value, which is different. Holding cost also depend on the Q value, and the C values will then be the three different options of the price. And also on the purchase price, you need to find the cost with the three different prices, 30, 29 and 28. And here you can see that you will get a lower total cost when you are ordering 2000, which is at the second breakpoint. Uh, even if you will have a much higher holding cost, this part, since you are ordering more items, will be higher than the ordering cost because here you don't have to order that frequently. The total cost will be smaller and the best option is at a cost of 75,160, order 2,000 items every time you place an order. But then you have the, the other type of, um, uh, of discount, which is the incremental quantity discount. Now you have to pay the same price for the item in an order in excess of um, you get a new price for the items in, uh, in an order in excess of 1500 and in excess of 2000. So the cost curve will look like this. You will have this price up to the first breakpoint. And if you are ordering more, the slope of the line will be different from this point because you have to pay the same price for the first 1500. Then you will get a new price, a new slope, and at the second breakpoint you will get an even other price and get another slope on the cost function. But for this batch you have to pay the same, for this batch you have to pay the same, and what is in excess of the breakpoint is where, where you get the, the discount. So then you have a cost function looking like this. If the order size is smaller than the breakpoint, it's very easy, it's 30 per item. If the order size is between 1500 and 2000, well, you have to buy 1500 
at the same price of 30 and then those in excess of 1500 the order size minus 1500 will get a new price and in addition if you are ordering more than 2000 you have the same price for the first 1500 you have a new price for the next 500 difference between 2000 and 1500 and you get a new price for those in excess of 2000 as the second breakpoint and we can find when um, uh, simplifying these uh, expressions here you will find that the cost function in the three options will be 30 multiplied by q 3000 plus 28 multiplied by q and 7000 plus 26 multiplied by q this is now the cost function and we need uh, the, the cost uh, or, or the, the the price for the order and to include in, in the total cost function for, for uh, including all elements, we need the unit price. And the unit price, well, it's fixed if you are ordering less than 1500, it's only 30, so that's easy. But the other two options here will depend on the actual size. So if you are ordering more than 2000, the unit price will obviously be smaller if you are ordering. 5,000 than if you're ordering 3,000 because then the Q value will be larger and this part dividing by Q will be, be smaller. So now you have the expression for the unit price. The first option is the same as we found with the uh, all unit discount because you have the unit price of 30. The second and third options needs to now to be, fine, uh, to be found uh, explicitly and uh, we first can look at the, the second option of ordering between 1500 and 2000. Then you have the cost function looking like this, but the unit price needs to be exchanged with the expression for the unit price as, as shown here, both in the holding cost and also in the purchase cost. Uh, I'm putting in the parameter values. Q is still the variable. Q is the order size which we want to find, the optimal order size. Ordering cost, shown here. Holding cost will be the expression here. And the purchase cost, this expression. And we can find a new expression for the cost function as shown here. 3.08 multiplied by Q. We'll find that when, when uh, just calculating this and simplifying. 3.108 uh, multiplied by Q. And this is uh, 10,800,000 divided by Q plus the constant of 67,530. So this is now the new and simplified cost function for the option of ordering between 1500 and 2000. And as we now find the optimal value of Q means that we should uh, derive the function because deriving a function will give you the, uh, the expression for the, uh, for the slope and when the slope is equal to zero you will find the optimal value of a function looking like either like this or eventually like this. Then the, the tangent, when the tangent val value is zero, which is what you find when you set the derived function equal to, to zero, is when you have the optimal point, either a maximum point or in this case a minimum point. Like the, the cost which will, the, the order size which will give you the minimum cost. So here, deriving this function, you will get 3.08 minus 10,800,000 divided to the square of Q. And the constant will disappear when you're deriving. So then this is equal to zero, means that the Q is 1,873. And this, what we now have to do is to compare this one to the range which will give us this price. And this number is between 1,500 and 2,000. Which means that this is a possible option for the optimal uh, policy. So 
use this number and now we have the simplified version here so we can just use this function instead of the more uh, complex one up here put 1873 into this function and get a total cost of 79,065 which is not so good we remember that here without discount we had 1044 and we had actually a lower cost but still we have one more option which is the uh, order size more than 2000 well the procedure is actually the same more than 2000 we will now use the new expression for the unit price as shown here in the same formula then calculate the costs put in all the different parameter values q is still the, the variable and simplify this version and you will get a function looking like this 2.86 multiplied by q plus 20,400 20, divided by q and plus the constant of 63,170 deriving this function you will get the expression here which corresponds to a q value of 2671 which is around here a large value which is within the scope because the well what you need is to order more than 2000 and this is obviously a value which is higher than 2000 so here using this number in the cost function will give us a total cost of 78447 optimal order size with this type since we compare this number to this number and uh, this number we can see that uh, ordering 2671 getting a, uh, getting a discount first a discount for the 500 between 1500 and 2000 and then a new discount for those in excess of 2000 will actually be cheaper or you will save money according to a strategy of ordering 1044 but still even if there was not a question about that in this case we only asked about the optimal order size which is 2671 but still if we now have the different options of producing ourselves or buying from the different producer with different types of discounts uh, the best option is to continue producing yourself because here uh, among these uh, alternative discounts the best possible the, the lowest cost was 75,160 and it w would be better for us to continue producing yourself if you look at uh, at the profit okay i will we can take a break now and uh, continue we have two more questions on uh, on this assignment which i will will present uh, after the break <laughs>